The symptoms of dust buildup. What are they? What causes it? But more importantly, how do you fix it? Let's take it to the bench. Wes, good to see you again. Hey, good to see you uh, too, Zach. Thanks for taking the time. I, kn I know you love dust. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> man. I tell you what, you know, my nose, allergies, that's right. <laughs> Don't we all love that? That's and right. So, so here we are. I suspect that I might have a dust buildup. What, what are some of the symptoms of dust, dust buildup? Well, you know, one of the biggest ones is uh, any kind of like thermal related type symptoms and thermal is just fancy for saying, hey, it's getting hot. Oh. Uh, and um, yeah, so dust, uh, a lot of times what it's gonna do is it's gonna manifest itself in one of two ways. Uh, one of the ways that you can see are random reboots within your system. Uh, and it, a lot of times it doesn't happen right away. That did happen. I, yeah. did, I, I had a reboot and so I, I didn't know, I didn't think it'd be dust. It's, I didn't think dust would cause it. Sure, so let me do a little bit of a interrogation here. So oh, okay. I would say we're gonna, we're gonna, uh, we're, we're gonna go through a uh, day in the life of Zach's computer here. Okay. Well, maybe not a day, just a few minutes, but so you push power on your computer. The, mm -hmm. A lot of time, or what I, I'm thinking might have happened is your computer works fine for a little while, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a few minutes, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even longer than that. Maybe you launch up an application that really needs some computational power, needs to, you know, um, have a, plenty of CPU, right. maybe, and then all of a sudden after using it, it reboots. That happened. Yeah, yeah. Well, that is usually a sign. Uh, well, I mean, it could be a sign of a couple other things, right? It could be a, a sign of component failure if you've got a crippled cooling system, which we'll all also look at that uh, coming up here in uh, another episode. But uh, dust and debris, when it comes down to it, uh, the main thing is it causes overheating. You mm. can see that uh, you, you, the temperature of the system unit is running a little bit hot. Mm -hmm. uh, and then ultimately in the user experience, if you're not really doing uh, investigation like to the system temperature, it's just gonna it's gonna manifest itself in a reboot. So it sounds like I'm baking a cake in there. So, <laughs> so that being said, uh, yeah. all right, the symptoms we got that, but yeah. what's the cause? What's the cause of all that? I mean, I live in a home that's very very clean. I keep it that way. Mm -hmm. I change my filters often, and mm -hmm. you know the air conditioning and whatnot. Sure. So what's causing it? Well, let's go ahead and back up on that statement. <laughs> so, I know you like to keep a clean house. You yeah. mentioned the filters. Yes. Why do you change the filters? Because they get filled with dust and yes, debris. Yes, they do. <laughs> and that, uh, yeah, and you know, honestly, joking aside, Zach, that's really not much different than what we see inside of our computer cases. And it doesn't matter if we're talking about something like the laptop that I have up here on the desk, something like the desktop that we're going to see here uh, momentarily, or even if you're talking like, for instance, in a server closet, uh, closet in a data center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, we have to keep systems, uh, you know, um, operational by keeping them cool. And when dust and debris gets in the air, a lot of times you can't see it, so, and it, yeah. you know, it's not necessarily floating in the air where you could see it. Uh, so it just accumulates over time. Uh, and you know, here in Florida, you know, we've got uh, in the summer months it gets really, really dusty inside because it's so hot. You don't want to go outside. But then, uh, you know, let's yeah, say the AC is always going. It's always going, yeah. absolutely, and it's pulling and it's trying to condition the air, but it's pulling a lot of dust. And all you have to do is look at any vent in your house, like you mentioned cleaning those vents, and you can see that the dust does build up. Uh, if you're talking about some of the colder regions, you know, maybe up in the, you know, the northeast and stuff, you know, during the winter months, right? gets very dusty because people are shut in, right? So Well, they, yeah, they've got their furnace going. Yeah, and other uh, other things that can happen too, it could just be location. If you mm -hmm. happen to work, uh, you know, maybe the computer's sitting in an area uh, in an office where uh, potentially, you know, there's a lot of dust generated in the air. Uh, if you, you know, uh, if a company that uh, has some kind of computers that's a, a lumber mill, mm -hmm. if it's a, you know, a concrete company, concrete facility, yeah, right? You have somebody that's probably gonna have a computer in there that's taking invoices and stuff. Uh, so low Location can be uh, another one of those big causes. Uh, let me show you here. In fact, I've got a picture pulled up. I'm on Wiki Commons right here. And oh, that's uh, lovely. Oh yeah. So we can see this one. This is a. Uh, this is <laughs> uh, Yeah. Yeah. We can see a lot of dust here in this system. Yeah. So uh, again, just kind of giving credit where credits due here. This is a Wiki Commons. You can see uh, dust build up in uh, the computer, but. Again, you can see oh, lots my, my. of dust here, lots of dust around this power cable, right? Uh, these old, it's, a, it's an older computer, you can definitely tell because of the old ribbon cables here, but there right. is a lot of dust. Uh, and uh, not only the cause of uh, you, you know, dust, this doesn't happen overnight, it doesn't happen within a week, I can tell you. This is probably one of those things that uh, also is caused not only by the dust, but the, ne the neglect 
to maintain the PC properly. Lack of maintenance. And get that, exactly, yeah. and get that dust out of there. Well, I wonder if that's what the inside of my computer looks like. <laughs> it very well could be. Oh my goodness. That's well, right. So at this point then, Obi-Wan, <laughs> I want to ask you, what is the solution? How can we fix this? Well, I tell you what, uh, uh, what do you say we go ahead and we clear off my computer and we get the uh, bench prepped up. We'll take a little break here. We'll get oh, sure. uh, our components over here. We'll come back and we can uh, show you some of the, uh, the solutions to the issue and then also some things that can uh, help you can help prevent this as well the magic of TV timeout we'll be right back mm -hmm. okay Wes so we've laid out a PC build right here the tower mm -hmm. and we've got a few other things going on over here and I'm sure you're gonna tell us all about that uh, what's the first thing that we can discuss when talking about the solution to our dust buildup. Well, it, you know, there, there. Are, it, it really depends on your case and how your case is manufactured. Sometimes cases will come with uh, a few extra features that kind of help uh, when it comes to uh, keeping dust out to begin with. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, you know, I, one of the things I noticed when I put this case up there is uh, you probably noticed that one right there. Well, yeah, I was, was going to ask you that. Well, yeah. This, this is a little sliding piece right here. Yeah. A yep. little screen. Yep. And yeah, that is or, a or that, vent. Yeah, that's a dust filter. So oh, remember what okay. you, were, you know, like you were talking about in your uh, AC there that you clean your dust filters. Well, these are actually reusable, unlike the ones that are you have in your AC unit, you know, central heating and air unit uh -huh. here in Florida. Uh, typically, what you have to do is you have to replace those, right? Yeah. Uh, I'll go ahead and take that. Oh now, sure. Well, and, and then what this does is essentially what we're doing here mm -hmm. is when this gets dusty, we can actually wash this off. Yeah. We can set it out to dry. Now, that's not the only one. Uh, I'll let you go ahead, and there is a magnet around here. Reach over there and pull that off the top here. It's kind of... Oh, might, yeah, you, it's you magnetized. Not, yeah, you might not even know that that one even exists, but that's another form of Whoa, one. Oh, look at that. And that actually came with this uh, Fantex case you can see there, and this one has... That's fantastic. Yeah, so this has magnets on the outside of it, and it just literally slips, and it's supposed to stick to the top of the case there. Now, I will tell you, it's kind of uh, defeating the purpose here. Uh, well, not really defeating the purpose. Um, if there was a fan on there, right, mm -hmm. it would be helping to catch some of that air. But right. as air gets pulled in from the case or pulled into the case and exhausted out of the case, these different uh, vents that we have here in combination with the dust filter, um, they can get clogged up, right? They can get clogged up with dirt so or, or dust and debris. So it's important that if you don't have one of these, you're definitely mindful of the vents that we have. And if we look at our tech cam here, you can mm -hmm, see that there's mm -hmm. a series of vents on the back. Right. Uh, we've got vents here where the, fan is, where the fan is, right? Every one of these areas can potentially uh, uh, get crippled, uh, crippled mm -hmm. uh, clogged, by, uh, clogged yeah. if you will. I, me I meant to say crippling the cooling system. They are clogged. clogged. Yeah, there we go. We'll make our own contributions <laughs> sure, to the English not? language, yeah, for sure. Well, you know, it's really amazing because uh, my PC, my tower, mm -hmm. doesn't have these filters. In fact, what, they, what it has is entrapment doors. <laughs> so it just holds it's old, it. It's old. It's, it's uh, like 10 years old or so. Mm -hmm. well, well, what do we have over here, Wes? What is this right here? All right. Well, we've got a couple of things here. Uh, one of the big things that I really like, this is uh, this is called a DataVac, and th this just happens to be a brand, MetroVac. You, you, if you haven't seen one of these before, this is really a, it, it's what's known as a anti-static vacuum, right? So you can use oh. vacuums on these and well, pretty much everybody knows, you know, the process of a vacuum. You mm -hmm, have to be mm -hmm. careful. But what's good about this type of vacuum uh, is the fact that it doesn't, uh, the, the motor in it doesn't generate a static charge. Right. Uh, you might notice that uh, one of the things here, I've got an ESD wrist strap on, right? That just prevents any static charge because it doesn't take a lot of uh, static electricity to ruin the sensitive circuitry that are inside of your case. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, this vacuum doesn't generate that static electricity and then dissipates it to any of your components in here. Uh, so this is a really good thing to have and I would recommend that if you have to do a lot of these like I used to work in a training institute uh, where we had upwards of 200 computers Goodness. Uh, and when we, we would go room to room and we just kind of knock them out like a checklist on PC maintenance and we would use one of these uh, if there were areas where maybe we only had a couple of computers that we needed to do we would use something like this and air. yeah this is this right here is just a little bit of compressed air mm -hmm. uh, and you got to be careful with it you don't want to ever shake the can um, if you shake the can, you can freeze it. Yes, I had that happen. Okay, yeah. I've got, <laughs> I, I, got, I got frostbite from a can once. <laughs> yeah, uh, so you just have to be careful on it. I've done it too, myself. You get in a hurry, 
And that's why if you've got a lot of them to do, I would definitely recommend something like this, especially mm -hmm. if you're doing this as part of your job. Uh, if you've got one or two computers that maybe you're just helping out, or maybe it's your own computer, I would say that this would be the way to go. And uh, this just happens to be CRC Duster, mm -hmm. and this is one that I picked up. It, it doesn't matter what the brand is. Right, just right. be very careful. In fact, if we take a bird's eye view, I'll, I'll kind of show you how you would go well, about good. using this. So I'm just going to remove the bolts uh, from the sidewall of this case and we'll take the plexiglass case off here. And I'm just gonna set this to the side temporarily. Now, you have some points uh, that you would have to be mindful of, like for instance, your heat sink. Uh, the fins here um, essentially help to pull the heat in uh, from the CPU and dissipate it away from the CPU and pull it into itself, and then the fan blows that hot air out. Well, when these fins, uh, when they get clogged with the dust, unfortunately, what happens is uh, it becomes an insulator. So you just take the, the compressed air, still a couple short little bursts, mm -hmm. Same thing with your fans back here. You'd hit your fan. Uh, and I tell you, if we, take, if we go to the tech cam, you can kind of see the fan spin when I do this. See the fan yeah, spinning? Yeah, there it goes. We used to have fun with these because you can, you, can, you can make them make a really cool sound. <laughs> uh, and then the same thing I would do, um, the other thing I would do is I would take off, like for instance, this case. We can take off the front uh, of the case. And then you'll see there's a fan right here. And what I would do is take some short bursts of air. Now, notice that it's already condensing. Yes. All right. That's OK. Um, it's going to condense even more. It's going to freeze up on it. And then you can't use it, and it becomes a waste. So you'd want to let this can just kind of sit so you don't have that problem. Again, not a big deal, just short bursts of air inside and make sure all that dust, you get all that dust out. Uh, if it's really dusty, I would suggest probably wearing a mask. Think mm -hmm. about HEPA filters on vacuums. There's a reason they put them there because it could irritate you, especially if you're doing a lot of these. Like I said, once you get through 50 computers, if you get a lot of dust in the air, it, it can start to play havoc on your sinuses. I know you and I have talked about them. Uh, we're not short oh, on yes. sinus problems, and you oh, can yes. definitely uh, accelerate those. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's essentially it. Um, you know, just short compressed air. Can uh, I would do this as part of PC maintenance. I wouldn't mm -hmm. wait till you have an issue. Mm -hmm. Do proactive maintenance on it. Use compressed air. If you're in an area where you've got quite a few of these to do, like I've had to do in the other training institutes that I've worked for, then I would definitely recommend one of these uh, anti-static um, uh, Metrovacs. And I imagine like any Anything else, if you schedule this, if you mm -hmm. schedule your maintenance, mm -hmm. then you won't get behind. That's right. It won't, it, it won't be uh, taking you over, so to speak, as we saw in that picture you showed us earlier. That's right. <laughs> yeah, just uh, schedule it. And uh, remember, scheduling is only half the battle. You can mm -hmm. schedule all you want, but if you don't follow through with it, then it do doesn't, it. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't really help you. Well, Wes, anything else? No, that's it. Uh, again, just uh, make sure that you're mindful of how you use this. Be very careful with it. Uh, you Do not use your one and a half uh, horsepower shop vac because it's no, got a lot of no. static charge. Make sure you use one of these anti-static uh, vacuums. Well, thank you because you helped us identify the symptoms and the sources of dust buildup. And I appreciate it, Wes. My PC appreciates it, too.